Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a new budget ham radio rig. This is the QIT KT 8900R Tri Band Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I found this new radio. This is a new um, radio that's being sold by QIT. This is an upgrade from their 8900. This is the KT 8900R and it is a Tri Bander. So it does. Uh, Two, uh, 2 meters, 220, and 440. And um, I'm really pleased with it so far. I've been playing around with it now for about a week and a half. Um, I haven't put it in its per permanent place yet because it is replacing, if you guys were with my channel a couple of years ago, this little 10 watt Lykson rig. This is the VV898. And this has worked amazingly well. I know I got a couple comments when I first bought it that people bet it wouldn't last a week. Well, here it is about year and a half, two years later, still working. <laughs> so I like to have a radio out here just basically for uh, the local stuff. And also if the power goes down, I can turn it on and it runs off my backup power pack, which we'll show you in a minute. Because um, that's how I'm going to have to power this radio. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is explain to you some of the features. Now, this is a tri-bander. As I said, it's 2 meters, 220, and 440. It comes with all of the tone functions. So you've got your two tones, your five tones, and DTMF functions. It's got a dual display and a dual standby. Now it's a very small screen, but you can actually see what's on there and you can also do them via labels. Like if you have a name for a repeater, you know, a call sign, you can do that or you can do it just by the frequencies. I'm old school, I like to do it by the frequencies, but it doesn't matter. The dimensions, 3.7 inches wide, 1.3 inches tall and 4.6 inches deep. It's got an RF output power of 25 watts on VHF and 20 on UHF, and it's got 200 memory channels, which is probably more than I'd ever use out here. And by the way, I'm with my friend Charlie today, so if you hear him talking, that's why he's also a ham. Working voltage is 13.8 as usual. Uh, you can do your channel spacing 2500 kilohertz, 20 or 12.5, and your squelch is all the normal squelch. You can do the CTCS, DCS, 5-tone, 2-tone, and DTMF. So, the advantage over something like this, first of all, the price. They're 80 bucks. I mean, at that price, they're almost disposable. Almost. <laughs> but um, I do like the construction of the radio. It does feel very good in the hands. It's a tiny little radio. Got a nice fan on the back. The fan does not come on unless you do a lot of transmitting. Um, I was messing around talking to somebody on Simplex with it. And finally, the fan came on after like 15 minutes of talking on it back and forth. And it was only on for a quick second. It's not overly loud or obnoxious or anything. Um, all in all, I kind of like it. I found that the the, uh, the, re the receiver sensi sensitivity on it is way, way better than uh, the Lyxon. Uh, I'm getting, you know, where I could hit 440 repeaters with this radio. Didn't hear them as well. This guy's pulling them in full scale with an antenna that's kind of a compromise up there, that Ed Fong antenna. And I am going to be replacing that antenna with something else because that is only a dual band antenna out there. And if you look back in my old videos, you'll find the Ed Fong antenna where I built it. Um, but it isn't a tri-bander, and I do have a tri-bander antenna that I'm going to put up. So anyway, I'm going to hook this up to some power. I'm going to let you see what it looks like, and then we're going to walk you through the programming. Now, you can manually program this. It's fairly simple to do. You'll put your, your uh, transmit frequency in first. Go to your number and save it. Then your repeater, fre your listening frequency in. You know, your receive frequency. And then you'll put the tone in. But it's a lot easier, and it saves you a lot of headaches if you do it with the, Q, uh, the QIT software. And uh, you can download that from their site. So let me get it set up here so that you can see what it looks like when it's on, running, and programming. And I'll bring you back All right, so I'm done. a bit of distance away from the radio, so I kind of had to zoom into there. Because <laughs> the way this uh, antenna wire fits in there is a little bit of a strange angle. But at least you can see the screen there. And you can see you can go from A or B back and forth between the two. Um, you also have an FM function on here, too. So if you want to do FM radio, you just hit that. And you can tune that. That's awfully loud. But you see it works. And you can tune through there. And also the programming from uh, the QIT uh, programming software has presets. If you want to put presets in there, you can do that. Anyway, most of this stuff is menu driven. And it's mostly driven from your um, handheld, your mic right there. So what you're going to really do is just hit menu on the bottom here. And be able to get into any kind of function. Now, I can go up and down from that. Let's, let's give you an example here. Um, let's see, menu 38. I'm going to press to make it shift. So we're going to hit menu, and then we're going to hit 3, 8. And there's your shift. You can go plus or minus on that. If you want to change this, let's say you want to change it to plus, I hit that. You see now it's, the minus is blinking. 
I use my up or down, I can go off, plus, or minus. And that's handy when you're programming. There's a ton of other things too. Now when you're done with that setting, I'm going to bring the mic up again here, you'll hit this exit button. I hope that's focusing for everyone. On the end. And there it is. Back to normal again. So as you can tell, it's fairly simple to, uh, to use. Everything here also works up here too. Like if you want to go from A to B. Right now it's on the A channel. Now it's on the B channel. I just have to hit there. Your power button is here. There's one of our local... Uh, local repeaters and uh, that's about it it's a pretty simple radio to mess around with I'm gonna go back to menu one and there's your step you can go uh, 2.5 or 5 but what I wanted to do and there's your squelch by the way you set it in squelch level uh, you set your squelch level in the menu it's menu 2 so you can take it up or down depending on what you need and there's your transmit power we're gonna try high now I want to change that so I can go to low and low I believe is 10 watts and it's just high or low. And there's your enter, and you'll hit your exit, and you're out. So, you can key up on one of our local repeaters. And there you go. So it's fairly simple to use. I'm going to show you the programming next. Unfortunately, I don't have any good 220 repeaters in the area. You don't know of any, Charlie, do you? No. No. There used to be a, a link here for Condor, which is a kind of a nationwide deal where you could... Uh, link up and talk around on 220 but it isn't up there anymore they're only in, based in California now they had a couple up on uh, a local mountain here so anyway I'm gonna get it all set up for programming and I'm gonna show you how I program it and we'll have to kinda of go back and forth between computer and uh, the screen of the uh, radio anyway give me a sec to set that up and I'll be right back. alright so we got everything wired up here I know it looks kinda strange the way I got everything wired up but um, you'll have your laptop or whatever, your computer, and you'll have your radio up there. Now, the cord also came with this. Not all of them do, so make sure you check. I will link one in the description that does. It comes with the programming cable in it. I mean, it's a 4 or $5 item. I don't know why they don't include it. But this, comp this company did include it with the radio. It is a regular USB, I believe it's the prolific USB driver, into just a regular plug, like a little uh, earphone jack type size plug. So that's what you need to program the radio. And I wanted you to see the radio in the distance because you'll see it turn itself off and back on and reboot once we load everything in there. The first thing you're going to want to do with the software, let me zoom in on the software here, is you're going to want to make sure that your connection is... Um, you know what, let me back that up a little bit. There. You're going to want to make sure that your connection is correct. So you're going to make sure that you're, uh, you got your uh, USB connection up and running. So... I don't want options. Get out of there. What we want to do is program and we want to read from radio. Now generally, I have a password in this one. It's just ones, nothing fancy. It's six ones. Okay. Now we're going to read our information down. Anyway, that's what it's going to look like. And then you're going to hear the radio reboot. And then you're going to see all of the data that I put in there already. Now, I do suggest that you download what's in the radio first. And that way you can see what's going on. So, there are all your frequencies in there. Okay? That's what's in there. So, you're going to work it kind of like this. I'm going to put a random frequency in here. Down here on 20. It says VHF, UHF. Of course, that's your only option. So, you're going to choose that. Then you're going to put your receive frequency in here, in that first column, and that's the frequency that you listen to. Then your transmit frequency, and that's your offset. That's going to be the frequency that's your offset. And then your CTS or DCS code, which we're not using on any of these. Then your encode, which we are using on some of these. I have some simplex frequencies in there. You'll choose your power, and I'm not sure what the, oh, the wide or narrow. We want it all wide because that's what we're using on ham radio. I'm not sure what the PTTID, but I know I had it off, and the busy lock off. I want it. I want it in my scan if I scan, and that's about it. Now, if you want to put a name to the frequency on the last thing, you'll see CH name, and you can put names in too. So when you go into the menu mode, and you pull it up, you can display it as the frequencies or as the channel name. So let's say you have a repeater, W6BBB. Okay. Well, you can pull it up as W6BBB, or you can pull it up as 146.94, whatever. You know, either way, you can pull it up like that. So, we've got all that in there. Now we're going to send it back over to the radio. So, I'm going to undo that so I don't make a mess out of it. When you've got all your programming information in there, 
And you just would program this, for those of you that are familiar with ham radio, you'd program this just like a regular, you know, regular repeater. Real simple stuff. There's nothing fancy in there or anything. Um, you don't need to put an offset in because you're putting your receive and transmit frequencies. So you just go to write. You click down here where it says write. I sure hope you guys can see that. And it's writing to the radio. You'll see the, yeah. you the thing the, down here. You're using the chirp program? No, this is actually their own program. Okay. And it's, it's, it's a strange name. It's QYTKT8900R, three band mobile, two, ra two way radio program software. <laughs> that's, that's the actual name of it. So you'll be able to get it from their website though. Um, in, the, uh, in the link that I'm gonna put down below for the radio, down below there, they will have the link directly to the software. All you're gonna need to do is download the driver for the actual wiring connection there, the, the USB connector, and this software here. Um, this will work with Chirp. There are a few workarounds you kind of got to do, but it will work with Chirp. But for me, I like quick and simple and fast, so this is how I do it. I just load the stuff up there, and I'm done. I don't even need to think about it. Anyway, that is how you program it. So I'm going to show you it um, back with the power supply over here in a second. Let me move this out of the way, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I got the radio back up there, sitting up there, working away. I'm going to be mounting it up where the other one was. And Charlie is the beneficiary of the old one, so... He'll be using that one, and uh, I wanted to show you what it comes with. So, with this particular deal, this is the one that I'm going to link down below in the description. It came with the cable. Not all of them do, so keep an eye out for that. You got your cable. I finally have a correct bracket. I ended up using some metal and bending it into shape to make a bracket for the likes, and because I lost the bracket, and then I found it after I'd done it. You got all your mounting screws here, an extra fuse. All your mounting screws for the... Uh, holder too, the microphone holder as well. This is one of those little hanger type style deals. You know it isn't a one that you hang up that way. And you also have this that I wouldn't recommend using because it's probably going to go over the amperage of your rated cigarette lighter, but it is a cigarette lighter adapter plug that uh, has the plug on the end there. And Charlie's hands are grabbing at it frantically. He's like, give me that, I need it. And with the 10 watt radio, it probably wouldn't be a problem. But with a 25, once you start getting up in that area, I really wouldn't do it. And of course, you have a user's manual. The user's manual is kind of eh, not great, but it's not horrible either. Um, it does have all the information in there for programming. So, it does, you know, I mean, if you read it and you pay attention to what you're doing, you can probably learn how to do it. But again, there's tons of videos on programming. I didn't really want to do a whole video on programming it because I use the software to program it. And the software makes it worlds easier and you don't have to sit and worry about it not working. Anyway, that is a QYT KT8900R. It is the upgraded version. The 8900 just had the buttons on top of it. You know, the orange buttons down here and on top. So this is the upgraded version. It is a tri-band radio, and it's 80 bucks. So if you're kind of on the fence of buying a mobile radio for your house, maybe you're in an area where you don't want to invest a ton of money because you can't put huge outside antennas up, but you still want to have something to monitor in the house, or maybe that's all you can afford right now. You're getting started in the hobby, and you can't spend four or $500 for an ICOM or a Yesu. This is definitely a decent alternative. Um, I've had no problems with strange noises. Um, we live in an area that seems to have a lot of emissions from everything from the Air Force doing their exercises over us to all the wireless internet companies that are out here this has picked up none of that and some of the other radios on occasion they will um, this doesn't even mess around when I have my solar stuff running it won't it won't uh, pick up that background noise that you get on every every radio in the house will on some frequencies will get that little zzz buzzer in the background but this won't do it at all so it's a pretty decent radio it's very well made i gotta say i'm impressed with the construction of it the uh, the likeson is a little bit lighter it always kind of felt like plastic to me until i actually used it and realized hey this is a decent radio but this one feels pretty good so um it's going to be living up here in my uh on my shelf and uh we'll give you a report maybe in a year when i get something new <laughs> Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I will put a link down below in this to a direct link to uh, that radio in my store. So if you're interested in picking it up, you can pick it up real simple. Um, and I will um, put the link down below for my store down below. So if you want to shop, everything I review, I try to put in the store. If it's not in there, it's because I bought it from somebody else or somewhere else. Or it's just something I picked up in a thrift shop. So I try to put the stuff in there so you can see it. 
And um, if you're interested in checking out that stuff, that's fine. If there's nothing in the store that interests you, just shop there as you normally would. It really helps out the channel. Also, don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link down below. Um, if you're interested in getting started with some freeze-dried foods, definitely the way to do it. Anyway, folks, expect some more videos on this. I'll give you a little more background as time goes by. This is really more of a, a, a little bit of an advanced unboxing to show you how it works and a quick overview of the program. And uh, all in all, I'm liking it so far. So, that's the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe and stay prepared.